May I, again, uh, may I begin with you, uh, Mr. Prager, if you had to identify a single threat to the future of our country, above all the others, what would it be? And then others comment as, as well when the time comes. No, it's not Obama. It's not. If, if, if God forbid President Obama came down with an illness, nothing would change. Nothing. I believe the greatest threat facing America, I believe this my entire adult life, is that we have not passed on what it means to be American to this generation. You cannot, let, 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 me, let me make this, this is not a, a, a sweet line, this is meant literally. A, a society does not survive if it does not have a reason to survive. That's true for individuals. Where there is a why, there is a how. I hate to tell you who said it, Nietzsche, but nevertheless, it remains true. We have lost the why. The greatest generation did not teach my generation what Americanism is. It's not its fault. It wasn't taught. This goes back 100 years to John Dewey, to the importation of European professors, to our universities, to a whole host of issues. The average American who deeply loves this country and even has conservative values cannot articulate what those values are. It is no one's fault, but that is the greatest threat. When we understand this American trinity, in God we trust liberty, e pluribus unum, that is uniquely American. It is not European. The French preferred fraternité and liberté and égalité, equality. We don't, as I explained in my talk. We believe in equality of birth but not equality of result. When it is understood what America stands for, when it is understood that there is a moral dimension to a smaller government. It is not an economic question, it is a moral question. We give far more charity per capita than Europeans do. Why? Are we born better? No. The bigger the government, the worse the citizen. They are preoccupied in Europe with how much time off. Where will they vacation? When will they retire? These are selfish questions. These are not altruistic questions. So the goodness that America created is jeopardized by our not knowing what we stand for. That's our greatest threat. We are our problem. Yes, sir. I, I, I just want to add a word here. There will always be a sliver of Americans like Governor Palin's son who will enlist and know in their gut because of their home life or because they're just special that they know that we have to defend freedom. But the very fact that the United States of America is about to confirm to the U.S. Supreme Court a woman who banned the military from her campus gives you an idea of how deep this problem is. That that is not disqualifying to Democrats. To Democrats that that is not disqualifying is a moment of darkness in American history. I, I would, uh, obviously I'm completely in agreement with the governor and, and my colleague. I would just add that I, I have never said this, so I have good uh, credentials to say this now, because uh, it's common for commentators to say every election, this is the most important election in American history or, or in our time. I never said that, with, except with regard to one, with regard to uh, Bush two, term two, because if we had let, if we had fled Iraq uh, the consequences in the world for the ascendance of, of evil uh, were, were too frightening to imagine. So I've only said this once before and it was a presidential election. This is not a presidential election and is the most important in modern American history this November. This, this, is, this November is a referendum on what we want America to be. It is nothing short of that. And there is one party that stands for America's values, that's, and it has nothing to do with patriotism, and I'm not attacking patriotic fervor or love of America. It has nothing to do with that. You can love America and be an awful American. It is, you, can be, you can love your children and be an awful parent. Okay? I, these things have to be spelled out to the left because they, they like to distort everything that we say. So the issue is not, are you a wonderful, wonderful person or love America? The issue is you have different values than America was founded on. 
And this is a referendum this November. That is why you must work your tails off as we are working our tails off. If we do not change both houses, we lose. That is how important it is. Let me uh, close this portion of our program by calling on each of our speakers in the same order as they were introduced to begin. Beginning with Dennis Prager. Dennis. Okay. <laughs> Folks, uh, Abraham Lincoln said that the United States is the last best hope for, for, uh, the, for Earth. That's the way he put it. Or we often say, for mankind. Uh, it will not be the last best hope for mankind if it becomes like Western Europe. Nobody has ever said Norway is the last best hope for mankind. Is that fair to say? This is, um, and I know I'll be attacked as anti-Norwegian because anything that we say is race-based. So with, with the risk of being considered anti-Scandinavian in my essence, may I say that nobody says Sweden, Norway, or Denmark uh, is the last best hope of mankind, nor have they ever have they said that since 1603 about France. And so it has only been said about the United States. This is, this is the force for good on this earth. It is not peace activists that liberated Auschwitz. It is military people who, mil who, 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 who liberated Auschwitz. The left the left has everything wrong, everything wrong, and that is what this battle is about, and it's a heroic battle, but we have to win. We have to do it based on the knowledge of what we are and what we have to retain, this being the last best hope for mankind. Do we want to be? The left does not want to be. The president was asked, do you believe in American exceptionalism? You know what his answer was? I'm sure many of you know it. He said, I believe in American exceptionalism, the way a Brit believes in British exceptionalism, and the way in which a Greek believes in Greek exceptionalism. But Greeks don't believe in Greek exceptionalism. They don't. Except an exceptional ability to get Germany to bail them out of their problems. That's, an except, that's exceptional, I must admit. But no, but it, do you realize what that answer means? It means we are not exceptional. That's what this battle is about. Is this a great a human experiment or isn't it? And finally, do we trust the United States to increase good on Earth or the United Nations to increase good on Earth? The left believes that the UN is a greater force for good than the United States. The United Nations just elected Iran to the Commission on the Status of Women. Do you know this was the first time in 28 years of broadcasting I could not think of an absurd analogy because you can't out absurd what happened at the UN. There, to elect Iran, I, I can only imagine, maybe they will, maybe the only thing I could imagine the Iranian delegate to the UN uh, Commission on the Status of Women speaking about is a new color of veil that Iran will be inaugurating and that will be an upgrade in the status of Iranian women. We are not only allowing black veils but gray and blue as well. I mean this is a country that tortures women who run away from their homes because they don't want to marry the man that their parents set them up with at the age of 11 and they are on the status of the Commission on Women who is the greater good on earth, the U.S. or the U.N.? I hope this invigorates you for the greatest fight in our history. Thank you.